This is 5AA Weekends. Go Go Juice, Nutrog Soil Probiotic at good hardware and garden stores. Nutrog.com.au. Morning, everyone. Michael Keelan's weekend, 25 minutes to 8. Fingers crossed we'll get a hold of Angus Stewart very shortly from Nutrog to talk all about things Nutrog, including we've got the Bush Tucker to give away four kilo bag developed to meet the needs of all the Australian native plants available at all good hardware and garden stores, nutrog.com.au. Next hour, June Taylor will join us with the Herb of the Month. Always fun to catch up with the Queen of Victor Harbour. We'll speak to the Executive Director of Biosecurity SA, Will Zacharin. Now, Will's going to be talking to us about the fruit fly. If you've got any questions, got any comments you want us to pass on to Will, we will do that. And Milton Vidoulis, expert panel from Vidoulis Garden Centre in Gawler, will be joining us between 9 and 10, not only to take your calls alongside Michael, but also with his plant of the month. Uh, yesterday, of course, Ed Wiener was on uh, reading news, yep. which was lovely. And we were talking about a dad, Nigel Stark. Yes. Um, uh, we had a Tina called through, or sorry, sent an email. I've been listening all morning and heard Ed Wiener talk about her dad. Can mm. you tell me his name? I know it was mentioned, but I've forgotten it. Uh, sorry, we couldn't get back to you yesterday, Tina, but it's Nigel Stark and he's in England and I think he's a PhD. Yes. Doing research on something or other and uh, written several books and yes. uh, so forth. So, um, but was part of the Adelaide media scene, not in the 80s? Yeah, a bit 80s. before my time, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I think it was the 80s, 90s. Um, Maybe. And very newsreader today, tonight. Uh, journalist, scholar, former Southeast Asia correspondent for mm. the ABC, yep. written, produced, appeared in documentaries for the ABC in the South Australian Film Corps. Yes. Four books. Yes. And father of, probably, um, better known now as father of Eddie. Eddie. F. Eddie's dad. O. O. E. The old foe. Not just Like FOMO. Yeah. Just the foe. Uh, no, very good indeed. Well, look, our uh, next guest, um, you will all know from either watching Gardening Australia or various other gardening programs, um, gardening author, former television presenter. He spent a lifetime working with and breeding Australian plants, also very instrumental in developing uh, a neutral product called Bush Tucker. And uh, Angus Stewart joins us now. Angus, good morning to you and a happy new year. Thank you very much. All well? Very well indeed. How do you spend your Christmas and New Year break, Angus? Well, I actually had uh, my four daughters uh, come down to visit me in my new home in Tasmania and uh, we planted a whole lot of uh, trees, in fact, which is a great way to celebrate. Good good way to spend the, the break with the family, for sure. Hey, Angus, we got you on today to talk about um, uh, native plants. Uh, what initially got you interested in native plants as opposed to you know other groups of plants? Well, I was always interested in horticulture, and uh, as a young kid, uh, my grandmother actually painted uh, wildflowers. She had these intricate watercolour paintings, uh, which I became fascinated uh, with this process where she was um, collecting all these beautiful wildflowers and sit for hours painting them and mm. uh, she had the unlikely uh, name of Daisy Wood oh, which yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, was not a stage name but uh, yeah she just loved uh, nature and, and I suppose I just uh, saw all those beautiful wildflowers and wondered why we didn't see them uh, so much in our garden so when I uh, started studying horticulture uh, that was what I gravitated towards. Are you from West Australia or no, I originally I grew up in Gosford, uh, okay. but I, I, every year I uh, make a pilgrimage over to <laughs> Western Australia to uh, <clears throat> look at the wildflowers and uh, and get involved. Mm. Hey, Angus, what about what, what are some of the uh, I suppose everyday problems we confront as gardeners in growing Australian natives? Well, it's uh, I think. Um, Probably the biggest issue I see is, is that Australian plants are, are sort of lumped into this group of uh, native plants and uh, people conceive of them as uh, the, rightly so, as, as these tough, resilient plants from the bush. But uh, the, uh, the devil's in the detail. So when you travel around Australia, you're going from rainforests to deserts and uh, 
snow he peaks and uh, uh, people tend to identify because it's an Australian plant, it, it fits into this mm. big group called native plants that, that are all uh, treated the same. So often there's disappointment when a, we try and grow, say, a Queensland rainforest plant in, in a garden in Adelaide mm. and, uh, you know, in the heat of summer it doesn't hold up. Yeah. For instance, so I think just getting people to uh, to research the right plant for their particular garden environment, uh, whether it be a native plant or a, or an exotic, uh, but but particularly with native plants, uh, so in Adelaide, uh, it's about finding species which will uh, mm. uh, survive the. You know, often you've got a limestone based soil that uh, is, is, can be quite uh, difficult. As well as the, you know, the relentless summer conditions. So, yeah, t- doing the homework, I think, is a, is a yeah. really important part you, of it. Do you think nurseries are playing their role in making sure that the the locality that they operate in are, are sort of catering for the the gardener that wants to grow a native and make sure the, the right varieties are available rather than imports? Of, you know? Yes. Look, this is where I, I really. Uh, Encourage people to support their local uh, nurseries that are uh, retail nurseries that, that provide that that level of detail because uh, those people are the ones who, who have grown up in a particular area usually and, and they're providing that uh, really detailed advice. So uh, often, yeah, if people are mm. buying plants online or whatever, they're, they're not uh, getting that level of advice. So uh, that would be my encouragement to seek out those uh, skilled nursery professionals that will give you that uh, level of, of detail about... Yeah, particularly uh, the native plants. I think there's, there's a tremendous uh, range of native plants uh, that have become available over the last 20 or 30 years, uh, including the sort of varieties that, that, that I'd breed, uh, which are designed, hopefully, to provide people with a much better gardening experience and so that, that uh, detailed knowledge of, of particularly the new varieties, but also those wild species mm. that are often uh, sold. And uh, some of the little uh, land care type nurseries, too, that, that sell the local uh, species yes. from an area are, are well worth seeking out as well. They're mm. often um, good volunteers who are local and have that detailed knowledge as well. Angus Stewart's our special guest. We're talking native plants. Angus, uh, how did you get involved with the other Angus from Neutrog in developing uh, bush tucker fertiliser? Yes, that, that was a, uh, a wonderful uh, experience. Um, uh, Neutrog are a fabulous Australian company and uh, run into Angus at uh, a number of uh, functions around the country and and we just got talking about the potential for uh, an organic native plant fertiliser mm. that uh, would also sort of build up people's soil as, as well as providing the, the right nutrition because there are definitely uh, some native plants that are, are uh, more sensitive to uh, phosphorus in particular. So I think most gardeners are familiar with the, the idea that native plants, um, in the, particularly in the Banksia family, are more sensitive to uh, the, the levels of phosphorus that you would normally use, say, on roses and uh, camellias, um, but apply that to uh, particularly to, say, Banksias and Waratahs, um, it can um, cause damage and, in extreme cases, kill them. So uh, most of the low phosphorus fertilisers available are inorganic. And uh, so we just just talked about the idea of of creating an organic Mm -hmm. alternative and uh, it's, I have to say, it's it's been uh, very, very successful. Well, um, it's good to... That people can uh, confidently reach for a pack of fertilizer that's been researched, been designed, been prescripted for uh, native plants. I mean, it's, it takes the hit and miss out of uh, feeding your plants, doesn't it? It's it's it's, it's, uh, it's quite easy these days to pick up a bag of bush tucker and there it is. You don't have to worry. 
Well, indeed, and uh, that that uh, was obviously the uh, the goal that we we set out to achieve, so that people could uh, confidently uh, reach for that. And and I think that the other point I'd like to make with it is that uh, there are a, a quite a number of native plants in your garden which um, are not as phosphorus sensitive, but the, the bush tucker is is designed. Mm for those as well. So the balance of nutrients, while it's low in phosphorus, the uh, nitrogen and uh, potassium levels and so on are designed to give people a great result uh, with, say, um, kangaroo pools are the plant that I've uh, spent most time developing and mm. uh, the more you feed them, the more flowers they produce. Yeah, that's right. So that, that was something we, uh, we really tested as well with the bush tucker, that it would suit those uh, species as well that, that like a bit of uh, extra nutrition. So being a, an organic product as well, it's a, a relatively slow-release thing, so you can put a, a dose on in spring and it will carry your plants through for uh, that uh, spring growing period and set them up for, uh, you know, great flowering and uh, growth. Mm. Um, I, uh, yeah. Angus, you've uh, written a few books. I've got a couple of them. Gardening on the Wild Side, is it? Yeah, no. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's proper gate. Are they still available? Uh, they are, yeah. I have uh, my website, Gardening with Angus, which uh, mm. I make uh, all my books available. And uh, also I'd like to mention uh, the, the fact uh, that uh, I've got a big uh, database of native plants there where people can search, uh, talking about finding the right native okay. plant for your well, Adelaide Garden that, um, yeah, people can actually uh, go through a list of, uh, I think we're up to a couple of thousand uh, oh, species and, and cultivars. So, uh, yeah, that, that's a searchable database, but the books are also available there as well. And I suppose always after feedback of people that have grown natives and, uh, you know, uh, any little tips they might have for growing them here in South Australia or Western Australia or whatever? Yes. Mm. Oh, look, absolutely. And and that's where I uh, uh, love the online uh, opportunity to provide that sort of advice that I was talking about that uh, nursery professionals also uh, create. So, um, yes, that, that level of detail about native plants, I'm very passionate about uh, getting people to have a great experience and choose the right uh, plant for their garden. Hey, Angus, uh, just finally, any uh, media commitments you've got these days? What do you do? Well, I've, I've moved down to Hobart, so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm working uh, occasionally at the, the ABC in, in Hobart doing radio work. Uh, Peter Cundall, uh, as you probably know, has just retired uh, yeah. finally from uh, from the radio and uh, after a 50-year career. So, <laughs> Not bad. Yes, it, it, uh, it's lovely to to always uh, be a little bit involved in that yeah, that's media side of things. So I'll continue to write books and uh, write for Gardening Australia magazine. And, uh, yes, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I wouldn't say I've retired at all. Oh, you're too young for that. Come on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Angus, good to catch up. Uh, probably see you at the Flower Show coming up in March. In, yes, in indeed, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, for and, sure, model. And, and thanks for your time today. It's been great to chat chat with you. Absolute pleasure. Cheers, Uncle. Cheers, Angus. Angus Stewart there from Gardening Australia. His books, got a couple of good books out. But his website, uh, Gardening with Angus, A-N-G-U-S, Gus, not gas. Mm. Um, And, uh, of course, developed the uh, wonderful... Uh, bio- biological fertiliser called Bush Tucker. Yes, and we've got some to give away today, yeah. the four kilo bags. Thanks to New Truck available at all good hardware and garden stores. Short break, it's 11 to 8. Your call's next. Oh, it's-